Hello. Good day to all my form 4 students. Today we are here to continue on the chapter Rate of Reaction and we are going to do part 6 today which is the last part of this chapter. In our previous part 5 of this video, we did on how does the four factors that affect the rate of reaction which is catalyst, concentration, temperature and size of reactant affect our daily life. And, in, and, before, and after that, in part 5, we learned about what is collision theory. How to explain collision theory. Okay, so what is actually collision theory and how to explain can collision theory and what are the, uh, what do you need in order to explain can collision theory. So in collision theory, you learned few terms which is activation energy. Teacher introduced the new term called activation energy of the reactants. Effective collision. Okay, so effective collision of a reaction and teacher explained to you what are needed in order to have effective collision. Okay, so what are needed in order to have effective collision? So you must have enough activation or minimum activation energy or more or minimum activation energy and also for effective collision you must have correct the particles must collide in correct orientation. So these are the two important rules for frequent uh, effective collision. Now, what uh, during explanation of the factors affecting rate of reaction, teacher just explained to you in part 3 and part 4, teacher just explained to you how does the factor affect the rate of reaction. But I did not explain to you what makes a certain factor effect in the case of maybe increase or decrease the rate of reaction. Teacher repeat. Huh? In part 3 and part 4, when teacher explained about factors affecting rate of reaction, I just told you what are the factors and how they affect rate of reaction. Whether this factor like this, it increases or decreases. But teacher did not explain to you all how and why it affects the certain rate of reaction. So, the answer for those questions will be answered in this part 6 video where after teacher have explained to you all regarding collision theory, after teacher have explained to you all regarding collision theory, teacher going to connect the collision theory with the factors affecting rate of reaction for your further understanding. And please remember this subtopic which is Collision theory and factors affecting rate of reaction is one of the popular questions for essay usually. Alright, so let's start. Huh? So let's go to, so you know the first factor that affects the rate of reaction is size of reactant. So this size of reactant, you must make sure at least one of the reactant must be solid in order for you to manipulate this factor. Now what happens is, teacher have written here, size of reactant. So, how does the size of reactant affects rate of, rate of reaction? So, you can see that smaller the size, the total exposed area, sorry, the total exposed area, okay, the total exposed area of the collision increases, meaning this size, 5 gram versus this size, okay, total 5 gram. Who is more exposed to the reactant to react? Of course, even though here the surface area, when it comes to just surface area, this one won. Of course, this one is bigger compared to smaller size. But when you look at total surface area, of course, this one has more exposed, total exposed area to collision is higher. Sorry about that. Huh? Okay, sorry about that. Teacher, you know, you see the area. Okay, now, so let's go to what happens to smaller the size. Total area exposed to collision is higher. Of course, the reactants are more, reacting more.
to all this exposed area. So that is the reason why when the size of reactant decreases, that means uh, when the total size of the total surface area of the reactant increases, you can find that frequency of collision between the particles increases. That means the particles can collide. That means the reactant and the two reactors can collide. Okay, the exposed area, right? So they will collide. Okay, okay, they will collide. And that frequency, now please remember who uh, guarantees reaction. Of course, this part guarantees reaction. So when the frequency of collision, frequency of collision is how much they are colliding per minute, per second, depends. Okay, so the frequency of collision between particles increases. So what happens is, when the frequency of collision between particles increases, of course, the frequency of effective collision between the particles also increases. Okay, also increases. Thus, the rate of reaction increases. Okay, so this is how you connect. When the size of reactant increases, smaller size, total area exposed to collision is higher. Thus, the frequency of collision between the particles increases. Now, please remember, the frequency of collision between the particles does not guarantee reaction. What guarantees the reaction is the frequency of effective collision that teacher explained to you in part 5, collision theory. Frequency of effective collision between the particles increases, thus the rate of reaction increases. So another thing teacher would like to say, can you see teacher say, name the particles. So when you are explaining this, this factor in, during essay question, you must name at least one of the particles. For instance, if you have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas, okay, so zinc chloride and hydrogen gas, you must name at least one of the particles. Here, the observable and measurable changes is hydrogen gas. So, who is responsible for hydrogen gas? Hydrogen ion and zinc atoms to produce chloride, okay. So now, so zinc chloride, huh? so can you see that you must explain at least one of the particles, okay? But here, since size of reactor, of course, huh? you must say, you must talk about the zinc atoms, okay? So you must talk about zinc atoms, so name the particles, okay? So you can say, smaller the size of zinc, total area exposed to collision is higher, frequency of effective collision between zinc atom and hydrogen ions increases, frequency of effective collision between zinc atom and hydrogen ion increases. Can you see? So this is how you explain. So you must name the particles involved for, for the particle, particular reaction. Alright? Now let's go to second example. Okay, not the second example, second factor affecting the rate of reaction and how they are connected to collision theory. Okay, now so you can say that temperature, second uh, one is temperature. You can say that temperature, when higher the temperature, higher the kinetic energy of particles to collide. So that means the particles will have more kinetic energy to collide. So when they collide more, Frequency of collision between the particle increases. Frequency of collision between the particle increases. But you must name the particle. And frequency of effective collision. You must explain or you must include frequency of effective collision. Must. Okay, why? Because frequency of effective collision guarantees reaction. Thus, rate of reaction increases. Okay, so this is how you explain temperature. That means how teacher connect collision theory, collision theory, okay, collision theory with the factor temperature. Now let's go to the third factor, concentration of the reactant. Higher the concentration of the reactant, higher the amount of particles per unit volume to collide. Teacher repeat. Higher the concentration, higher the amount of particles per unit volume to collide. For instance, 
Katakan, just say this is 0 0.01 mole hydro, sorry, mole per dm cube. Mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid versus 1 mole dm cube hydrochloric acid. Okay, now so you can say that if Okay, so just say, huh? so just say, just imagine this is the particles of hydrogen ion and chloride ion. So, if teacher divide this beaker, just say roughly all the beakers, just imagine if all the beakers are same. Huh? This is 0 0.01 mole, this is 1 mole. Can you see the concentration? Can you see the amount of particles? Amount of particles. So, just say roughly the teacher divide this into 4 unit volume. Can you see? So you can see that if teacher divided into four unit volume, just say, huh? so can you see that the amount of particles in higher concentration area, which is one mole per dm cube is higher. So that is the reason why higher the concentration of the reactant, higher amount of particles per unit volume. That means you have per unit volume, just say in this, uh, like our pre previous example teacher gave you, hydrochloric acid you add with zinc so if you add zinc inside you can say that zinc has more particles to get with in 1 mole compared to 0 0.01 mole ok so that you just say you add 5 gram of zinc to each of these beakers you will find that this beaker produces more hydrogen gas ok so now so you can say that higher the concentration of the reactant here Please remember that the reactant is of course hydrogen, hydrogen chloride, sorry, hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride, huh? hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride is for gas, okay, Hydro, uh, hydrochloric acid. So, the particles which are involved in this reaction, which is zinc plus hydrochloric acid, is hydrogen ion. You must be very specific on the, the name of the particles that you are using. Okay, so please remember, don't say zinc. Why? Because concentration is only applicable for solution. So, who is in the form of solution? Hydrochloric acid or zinc? Of course, hydrochloric acid is a form of solution. So, you can use hydrogen ion as the particles responsible to produce hydrogen gas. Teacher repeat, when talking about concentration of reactant, just say, teacher take this reaction... Okay, sorry. Zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Okay, so just say for this reaction, the only uh, reactant which can is suitable for you to explain on concentration is hydrochloric acid. Why? In a form of solution. So don't use zinc. Why? This is in a form of size of reactant. Zinc is suitable for you to explain when you are using size of the reactant. Why? Because solid. Okay. Now, so here, so you can use the part. Now, you, your dilemma will be, teacher, what particle am I supposed to use? Of course, logically, hydrochloric acid has chloride ion. But it's okay if you don't mention chloride ion because here the observable changes and Measurable observable changes is hydrogen gas. So the person who is responsible to produce observable and measurable hydrogen gas is hydrogen ion 10. Can you see? Hydrogen ion is responsible for the production of hydrogen gas. So that is the reason why for this reaction teacher will change like this. Higher the concentration of reactant okay, or higher the concentration of hydrochloric acid higher amount of hydrogen ion per volume unit, per unit volume to collide. Can you see how teacher change it according to the reaction? Here, smaller the size of zinc, total area exposed to collision is higher. Okay, so don't use hydrogen, uh, hydrochloric acid. Why? It depends on how suitable it is. Right? Okay. Now, so what happens? So, higher the concentration, just say, let's refer to this, uh, 
higher the concentration of hydrogen ion, sorry, higher, higher the concentration of hydrochloric acid, higher amount of hydrogen ion per unit volume to collide. So, frequency of collision between hydrogen particles and zinc atom increases. So, frequency of effective collision between particles or hydrogen ion and zinc atom increases. Okay, so can you see this? So, that is how you explain. Thus, rate of reaction increases. Now, let's go to catalyst. So, catalyst provides alternative path of reaction which needs lower activation energy for effective collision. Okay, for effective collision. Now, what happens is catalyst provides alternative. Now, here you need to use the word Cat, uh, activation energy only for catalyst you will be using the word activation energy okay only for catalyst you use the word activation energy this is the original just say uh, this is the original activation energy for the reaction okay so this is the activation energy okay this is the activation energy you can find, you can say what is actually they are trying to say with catalyst is catalyst produces lower alternative path. Can you see that something that it has been, a catalyst provides shortcut. Okay, catalyst provides shortcut. Okay, so activation energy. Can you see the activation energy has been lowered so more particles can collide. Okay, so needs, that means more particles can collide. That means, uh, for instance, uh, Teacher selling a book for 15 ringgit, not just say, not all can buy. Okay, but if teacher reduce, reduce, okay, reduce the price of the book to maybe 10 ringgit, maybe majority of the students can buy, just like that. Can you see, just because teacher discounted, so the discount is actually the catalyst. So when teacher put the, the price of the book as 15 ringgit, not all can buy. That means the reaction is still happening, reaction is still happening, not, not all. But when teacher reduce the price to 10 ringgit, maybe 5, maybe 7 out of uh, 10 students can buy. Originally, only 5 managed to buy when the uh, price was 15 ringgit. Okay, now teacher reduce, it will, it, it, more students can buy. So the same goes. So this is the key point. Provides alternative path of reaction which needs lower activation energy or effective collision. Then frequency of collision between particles increases and frequency of effective collision between particles increases. Thus, rate of reaction increases. So, this is how you explain for the factors, factor catalyst when you're explaining collision theory. One thing teacher would like you to, you, I want you to realize is, can you see that here, Factors affecting rate of reaction collision theory. Can you see the word collision? Can you see the word collision? So that is important. Can you see? Because now you are connecting the factor with collision theory. So this is how you do your connect your collision theory with factors affecting the rate of reaction. So I hope you can understand teacher's video and watch all of teacher's video for rate of reaction. Thanks. Until then, thank you for watching. See you all again.